June 12, also known as Democracy Day, now is the day Moshud Kashimau Olawali Abiola became the winner of the 1993 presidential election, which is regarded as the freest election ever held in Nigeria. He has been regarded as a symbol of democracy in Nigeria. Today, we'll be discussing the many lessons Nigeria needs to learn from this historical day. Joining us is Yerima Shetima, who is the president of Arewa Youth Consultative Forum via Zoom. And also we have uh, Abdul Mumuni Abiola, son to late MKU Abiola, joining us via Sky. Good evening, gentlemen. Yeah, good evening. Good evening, Via. Thank you. Uh, let me start with the son. Um, Abdul. I, 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 I listen to you virtually every year. I, I, I am one of those people who come to cover several I'm events that we have. Uh, now, uh, can you take us through uh, what your dad stands for that you still remember and you forever say that uh, I will stand with what my daddy stood for? Oh, well, uh, first of all, thank you for having me. Uh, I want to say that um, that my father stood for many things. You know, he was both um, a ph uh, philanthropist. He was both uh, he was a Nigerian man, but he was also Nigerian. And I think it's most important that people understand that my father's greatest assets was the fact that he was Nigerian, and he didn't really look at things in in a prism of maybe tribal prism, in the sense that maybe I'm Muslim. He didn't say, oh, I'm Yoruba, or no. It, it was mostly, I am Nigerian. So I think that's one of the things that's really important that people need to understand about Chief M.K. Abiola. He was Nigerian through and through, and he really believed in the prosperity of this country and the people that that live in this country. You know, I, I, I keep saying this, that um, my father came from very humble beginnings. Um, you know, it was through education and um, a lot of hard work that he was able to become one of the richest people in Africa. You know, it's important that we understand that. And, you know, and, and my brother didn't forget that as well. You know, so it's important that we understand that, um, you know, when you look at, you know, somebody, you, you know, you should think about how you, how, you get to your, how you get to that position. You know, you, I believe it's a, it's a progression. So it's important that people understand that it's not that Abiola, you know, did anything miraculous. He just did what any leader should do. You know, whatever my father did during that, um, during the elections and, and subsequently, was exactly what every leader should be able to do, especially for their people. And like I said, my father was very opportunistic by having so many opportunities to go to like good schools and you know get scholarships. But my father also knew that if he could rise from the from basically um, poverty and to become one of the richest people in Africa, then all Nigerian people needed was the potential, the support, and God knows how many other builders would have been able to have, and would have been created in this in that little process. So I think he really believed in the potential of every Nigerian, no no matter where they came from. And I think that's important that we don't forget that our greatest. Um, our greatest tool and our greatest um, inherent ability is the Nigerian spirit, the Nigerian people. That's the best thing that we can have. Thank what you. we now need to do is how we focus and channel that energy towards bringing a better tomorrow for all of us. Abdul, I'll, I'll come back to you. Yerima, uh, uh, we, we decided to bring you into this conversation because for a very long time, we see only the Southwest celebrating this June 12 until President Muhammadu Buhari change the, the game and it makes it a national day. Uh, do you really share that belief that Abiola is a <laughs> national hero? Coyote, <laughs> hey, uh, it sounds funny I'm getting this from you. Uh, some of us are students of this struggle for over 20-something years to that as people too. We actually participated in the struggle against that annulment of June 12th. Don't forget that I'm a typical Hausa man from the north. She Usani, Tanko Yakasa, and some of us actually participated in that struggle at that time, even though I was a very young student at that uh, June 12th struggle. Uh, so, but it will be out of place again for somebody to assume that it is only the south 
that field because one Abiola has been a hero and don't forget that even when the election was conducted he actually won the election in Kano in even Bashir Tufa's constituency he won the election and that's to tell you that actually they not actually participated and one of the saddest thing that oftentimes we make the June 12th to become a rallying point was that uh, that election was annual and what that election was one of the most freest and fair election you remember vividly, and we never had it again ever since we lost out that. And that's why some of us look at it very, very significant. And of course, uh, we are happy that at least for once, that after since 1999, since the coming of this democracy from 1999 to date, it was only under this administration of General Muhammad Buhari that we had uh, the government to an extent making a little impact, even though it's not enough that. June 12th is declared democracy that automatically is supposed to be so, but at least we're happy that the government of the day has actually taken note of that and cognizance of that. We are looking for more, and we will continue to demand for more because it's a moment where all progressive pro-democracy activists mark this day as a day where we sit down to reflect on issues and look at issues, begin to think of how to reflect on our past and look at the present situation we are, then we demand for more things to be done as regards to the reality of what Nigeria is today. Shetima, I, I, I'm shocked to tell you that a good number of the millennials, which is the focus of this discussion, are, are yet to come to terms with the man MKU Abiola, despite the yearly ritual that activists like you always conduct yourself. What exactly is wrong with our history that current day, you remember the story of uh, Unilag when it was changed to uh, Moshe Abiola, and you saw that kind of vehement opposition to that. What does it say about our history? Well, it is unfortunate that sometimes things happen abnormal in the country and things happen that way because some of us are demanding for more that the name of in the lag is named after Timonkyo Aula. Some of us felt it's not enough, that the public holiday is declared after him is not enough because some of us know exactly what happens then and we expect more than what is happening today. What is wrong if the government of the day is sincere? What is wrong in gazetting Chief MK Abiola as former president who was never sworn in as the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria? Why is it so difficult? We don't get carried away by just merely naming Chief MK Abiola's name after a national stadium in Abuja. It's not enough. Uh, one abandoned property or naming just public holiday. We demand for more and we will continue to insist that the right thing be done so that this record can be put straight. Whether you like it or not, take it or leave it. Abiola is a hero of democracy, and that will stand for. We will continue to insist and demand for more. The writing must be done so that we can leave something behind for yet unborn children to come and see and stand by it also. That record must be put straight. And I'm sure a lot of people are guilty. It takes time, but some of them will definitely, even when they are strongly opposed to it, will have no choice at the end of the day than to accept the realities. And this reality will be done on every Nigerian when the time comes. Okay, Abdul, uh, uh, I, we asked you this question. Due to network, you were not able to clean it up. But let's come back to that question, Abdul. Um, we asked you that uh, this is a case of you losing both parents to the struggle. We're talking about uh, Kudurat Abiola and uh, Moshuda Abiola himself. And uh, these people stood for something. It's not really for their pocket. So are you impressed with the Nigeria that we have today, at least looking at uh, what the current government has done by recognizing him as the symbol of uh, democracy? Um, well, thank you again, Kairi. Um, first of all, I, I do, I, I understand that um, the events that transpired and um, that happened during the 1993 elections and after the fact, you know, the imprisonment of my father, incarceration of my father, you know, for four years before his death and then the killing of my mother, they were tragic events. But I, I do believe that, you know, if we want to be honest, you know, I, I, I don't want to be, I don't want to say that I believe in what they stood for and I believe that they they did what was right. So that is enough for me. And I, I actually believe that there are people in, in Nigeria today and even across the world who, who probably didn't know their mothers or fathers. I got to have spent some time with my, my family and my mother even though it was a short time, but I got to actually meet her, so even understand what she would, um, what she want me to do. So I had some kind of guidance. So I'm, I'm just thank a lot for that. Um, when we talk about the democracy that we have today, you know, I actually think that you know when the whole situation and the whole elections were truncated, I actually think that you know we yes we had democracy, but it was just more by face. 
So and the subsequent elections that um, trans that happened, you know, from 1999 upwards, you, we could see that there was some, you know, it wasn't really, a, you know, it wasn't the masses were already defeated at that point. I think what Mr. Um, President Buhari has done by recognizing June 12 as Democracy Day is try to rekindle that spirit, the spirit of oneness, the spirit of unity, that the spirit that if, you know, we if we can find it in ourselves once again. To like you know jo to join hands and move and and steady the ship and try to like you know go um, um, move the nation forward, it, it, it might actually work this time. So I, I'm I'm really encouraged by Mr. President's move. I I do agree with my brother Yerima when he suggests that more can be done. Yeah, but yeah, more can be done. But you know sometimes I always think that the most that can be done, especially in light of this COVID-19 um, pandemic, is to start to look at some of these issues that my father raised in 1993. I think they are still pertinent today. Like, for instance, I would give you um, one of the issues that will be in a situation like COVID-19 now, we have a situation where the airports are closed. So you can't even travel out to get basic treatment for maybe any of your illnesses. So this might be a time for our leaders to look inwards and see how we can build our own facilities. That way we don't necessarily have to rely on on the world or, or we don't necessarily have to rely on anybody else. Because I actually believe that Nigeria is inherently endowed with all it needs to actually succeed and progress. And I actually think that, inshallah, you know, um, as President Buhari completes you know, his journey to 2023, you know, I believe that there'll be, there'll be some, um, we'll have more credible, you know, candidates come up for, you know, for um, elected office in come 2023, because that will be 30 years from um, um, from 1993. So it's, it's important that we don't, you know, we don't um, point fingers at this, at this crucial time. What we need to do is join hands. The country is 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 basically tear, is basically tearing itself at the seams. So the most important thing we can do now is to try to start trying to have conversations on how the country can be moved forward. What lessons can be learned from June 12, and 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 this in, in a day like this, where well, everybody is actually talking about the democracy that we have and how we can improve it, it it's it's very key. It's very key that we still understand that this Nigeria belongs to all of us. And a, a, a united Nigeria is what my father would want more than anything else. So I'm really happy about what we what we have now. And it's encouraging me to even want to push more for more, like for more um, inclusion in in in, in, the, in the in the political um, landscape. So it's very important that the youth, the young ones, start to see that okay, you know what, you know what can they actually um, what can they actually do to engage the system? I actually Thank believe you. that the more people that engage in this democracy that we have today the harder it will be for our leaders to take us for granted. Thank for instance, so much, if you have you. a state like Lagos, you know, the, it's important that you, if you have a state like Lagos and you have maybe 6 million people having voters' cards, I would like a situation where 5 million people actually vote for the governor. So that way you know that the majority of the people who have voters' cards, yeah, who are eligible to vote, are the ones deciding and not Thank the so minority. Much, so yes, I do think there's a lot to improve. But uh, 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 so sorry, Abdul, your time is, uh, our time is fast spent, and we can only say thank you for your time. Thank you for taking our time to express your thought, and I believe that the younger generation will take a cue from this, and uh, probably next year we'll be singing a better song than what we are singing right now. Thank you once again. Abdul Mumuni Abiola is the son to the late MKO Abiola. And also thank you, Yerima Shetima, the president of Arewa Youth Consultative Forum. I wish we could continue the conversation, but time is really not <laughs> on our side. Thank you so much, Yerima. Thank you, Ms. Akadi. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you for still staying with us. We will take our plots report now, and I will be giving you my take when I return. Please stay tuned. June 12, 2020, a day that marks one of the fiercest struggles of the Nigerian state towards democracy. Right behind me is the statue of a man who is described as the hero of the June 12, 1993 struggle, Chief MKO Abiola. Mashut Kashimawo Olawale Abiola, MKO, was young and passionate about democracy. It is 27 years after the election was annulled by the then military government headed by General Ibrahim Badamosi Babangida, IBB. 
It is 27 years after the unofficial result of the election, though not declared by the National Electoral Commission, NEC, indicated a victory for MKO of the Social Democratic Party, SDP, who defeated Bashar Tofa of the National Republican Convention, NRC. And it is 22 years after MKO was allegedly killed while in custody. Today, it is not only a Biola day in Nigeria, but today, over 180 million Nigerians mark Democracy Day nationally, thanks to the President, Muhammad Buhari, passed a bill to legalize June 12 as Democracy Day. While it is an emotional day for Nigeria as a nation, for scores of first-generation nationalists who have been on the forefront of national development, the annulment of the June 12 election was a step that further plunged the country into rot. MKO Abiola died for a collective struggle. It's a collective responsibility that will continue to keep his memory alive and ensure that the ideas of June 12 lives. My biggest regret is that we fought for a restoration to full-blown democracy because we were uh, of the strong opinion that those who will take over governance after the exit of the military will be mindful of the economic deprivation of our people. But what would have been different if the June 12 election was not an old? It was, it, was, it was a very peaceful election. I was there, so it wasn't... I worked for INEC as ad hoc staff for that election. It was a very peaceful election. I judged, you know, to be very peaceful. It, we were very sad when the election was cancelled. Um, if, uh, if June 12 had been allowed to stay, would Nigeria uh, have been better? Uh, perhaps yes, because... And my only reason would be that we wouldn't have had a lot more protracted uh, military rule because the military rule has, uh, has had serious implication on us as Nigerians. Almost three decades after, how has Nigeria fared post June 12, 1993? 27 years after, looking back, MQ will not be too happy with all that is happening in this country. And how does the Abiola family feel about June 12th? My father was Nigerian through and through. So I've had a question asked of me once where they asked me if I was upset about what my father did or I would have rather him stay at home. No, I'm very proud of my father. I believe he stood for what he believed in. I believe he was in the right when he made those decisions. And I believe that if 1993, June 12th was allowed to go on, Nigeria would be a better place today. But notwithstanding, I'm still very optimistic about the country's future. You know, who would have ever thought that 25 years later we will be celebrating Democracy Day on June 12. Mkwe Abiola died for all of us. So it's a collective responsibility in ensuring that we make Nigeria work in our lifetime. And that is why leaders must know that they are servants. They are there to serve and that whatever it is, people paid the price. So therefore, their death must never be in vain. As the world joins Nigeria to celebrate June 12 as Democracy Day, the emphasis is laid on better leadership, especially as the nation has remained the poverty capital of the world since 2019. From Lagos, Mary Chinda reporting for Plus TV Africa. And this is my take. One big lesson of June 12 is it should not just be worth living for, but worth dying for. When you're driven by conviction, do not get distracted. Kudos to many pro June 12 soldiers, both dead and alive. The Ghani Fawaimi, Kudirat Abiola, Pa Alfred Rewani, Professor Wale Shuinka, Dr. Joe Oke Odumaki, Bayo Nonuga, Papa Femi Ojudu, the list is endless. Yours is a message of resilience and audacity. If redemption can come 26 years after the election was annulled, then impossibility only exists in the dictionary 
of mediocres. Never give up. Your emancipation is around the corner. Happy Democracy Day. Plus Politics returns on Monday evening with interesting discussions. Until next time, I remain yours truly. Coyote, Ladende, saying bye for now.